Hello again guys and welcome back to another episode of Roadside Reviews. My name is John Sievers with World Car Kia and today we're going to be looking at the all new 2021 Kia Telluride. Now this is the fully loaded option model as you can be able to tell that's been our MO for a lot of these vehicles and for good reason is because this has so much tech, technology, safety features and just comfort that we want to be able to go ahead and show you all. And today we're going to do things a little bit differently. Instead of starting on the outside and working our way around and showing you all nice design features of it, we're going to go ahead and show you a lot of the interior technology and different things you get on this vehicle that you don't see on a lot of our other competitors. And that's what's going to kind of separate it. And honestly, if you're clicking on this video, those are the things you want to be able to know about. So we're going to go ahead and start inside in the driver's seat. So if you want to come follow me this way, let's get started. All right, so as with all of our other models that we've shown too, intelligent key, smart key, whatever you want to be able to call it, key fob. Simply have it inside the vehicle, put on the brake, push the start, nothing too special there, but we do want to get the air conditioning going because it is, was it November, almost Thanksgiving here in South Texas, and it is still 80, 90 degrees outside. So getting into the interior of this, the one thing you're going to notice that's been a lot different from some of the other vehicles like the Palisade that we talked about before is, you know, this is more of a rugged feel of an SUV than what you would see, you know, the Palisade was, where the Palisade was almost very sleek and designed and, you know, it just, everything was very seamless. This is a lot different. You know, you have these big sturdy grab handles on the side, this beautiful wood trim that goes all the way across the dash into the driver's side as well. And just the fit and finish, you know, still of top notch, highest quality items, but it feels more like the full size SUV, like, you know, something along the lines of like a, uh, a Tahoe or an Armada, not, you know, kind of the, the, the mid to larger size, you know, that you'd see like what, say like the Honda Pilot or Toyota Highlander. So it's got a lot more rugged feel just by looking at it alone, which I really, really like. And then this color combination that goes along with it too, very rustic, big fan of that. Over here on the driver door, very simple controls, driver windows, you have your mirror controls, all the other windows as well. You do have the power folding mirrors, which is a nice feature. So this is a little bit of a bigger SUV. If you're getting into a smaller garage or a tight spot, just one button, be able to go ahead and flip those in and out. And of course your memory seating is too. So it's again, seat controls, mirror controls, everything gets programmed into that. So if you have two different people that are gonna be normally driving the vehicle, don't have to worry about hunting for that perfect spot, set it, everything moves back to where you're at. Pretty easy. And of course, in all your lane assist, blind spot monitoring, all your controls are located over here on this side just like with almost every other vehicle we've seen. Big thing gets into is when we're looking at the dash and the, the display. Whereas the Hyundai Palisade had that full digital display, there was no actual mechanical gauges in it. This still has those. I'm kind of a big fan of that, I like that. And once again, it kind of goes along with that rugged truck feel. But speedometer, RPMs, engine temperature, fuel gauge, all that stuff's displayed out there. So this is the first part of it, which is gonna be your fuel economy. You know, average fuel mileage, your instant fuel economy, big whoop, trip computers, every vehicle has that now. One cool thing I like about it is you actually have a digital display readout for your speedometer. So if you're going through, let's say, Omas Park or Shavno Park or anything that ends with a park or a city behind it, that's very strict on law enforcement with their uh, with their speeds. At least you can be able to keep it exactly on the dot. And if you're just a little bit more of a stickler for the speed, easy way to be able to see it too. And then coming down to your driving modes where you have your uh, dynamic driving modes, which will sharpen everything up or going back into your uh, normal ones. That's gonna be your first screen that you see from here. Second part is gonna be your compass. Third is gonna be all your uh, safety features. So like your lane keep assist. So if you start kind of nudging out of a lane without your blinker on it, it can be able to read the actual lane lines that you're driving down. It'll kind of just nudge the car right back into its own spot. At tension level, this is really cool. So it'll actually be able to monitor how long you've been driving and kind of give you a little bit of a graph saying, hey, it might be time to be able to pull over and take a stop. So instead of just warning you like, hey, you should pull over, take a breather, get a cup of coffee, this will actually kind of give you a little bit more area showing that, hey, you might be needing to take a stop here the next time you fuel up with gas. And then of course your tire pressure. So once again, once you start driving and rolling, you can be able to get a sense of that, but it'll actually give a digital display and readout of each one of the tire pressures in each individual tire. And then all your menu settings. So everything from your doors, your lights, sounds, all of your, even service intervals, you know, when it's time to get your oil changed. One really nice feature about this that I like that I only thought came on the Palisades, but now you can get on the higher trim levels of the uh, Telluride 
It's going to remember that blind spot camera that we saw before when you turn on your blinker, it would actually be able to show you what's on either side. Even though you have analog gauges, they figured it out. So if you apply your left blinker, now you have that side view camera on the driver's side. Same thing with passenger side, which I thought was very cool. So not only do you keep that nice rugged look that you have with the SUV by having those analog gauges, but you still have the same technology that the Palisade had. I think that was really slick. Very high resolution, very easy to be able to see too. So it was a nice surprise for us to see that. Everything from your audio controls, Bluetooth hands-free, everything's still gonna be located over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Easy enough to be able to get to. Nice thick leather wrap steering wheel too, but I also like too that even though it is an airbag and it's probably not real, but this nice stitching that they put into the center, that's a nice touch. Something that you see on really high-end cars where they've actually decided to be able to put in the effort to even make it look like it's real leather stitching, but it really kind of adds to the appeal. Once again, that rugged, that high quality look that we talked about before. Getting over here to the top, you do have one sunroof, which is power, venting, and opening. Pretty simple like you see in a lot of other different SUVs or cars. But then you do also have a full panoramic sunroof for the second and third row into the back. Now that doesn't open up, but you do have a shade, which is also power too. So if you have little ones in the back or no one's riding back there anymore, you can be able to open and close it from the front. Just makes life a little bit easier. Nap lights, sunglass holders, or any other little loose items you want to hold up there. Auto dimming rearview mirror with the home link. So garage door openers, gate clickers, you can program all that in there and then coming back down to the center stack for your display, for your navigation, your radios, everything else that you'd be using. They use a lot of the same proprietary information that you've seen like on the Kia Stinger and the Hyundai, or the, uh, yeah, the Hyundai Palisade. Awesome system. I think the one thing I can't really be able to emphasize is how quickly it, it reacts to your touch, and it's very seamless too. And everything that you'd want to be able to use, you can be able to use a split screen to where you have you know, your navigation up and also your stereo you can actually be able to widen that out to where you can be able to have the whole screen go across that, which is really, really nice too. But you can be able to see everything. It's Look how quickly that's moving. That's very, very responsive. Be able to change your different screens from 3D view, any of that, zoom in, zoom out. Very quick, very nimble. Like I said, it reacts very nice. So it's not that typical lag that you'd see in some of the other vehicles out there. I like that quite a bit. Now going back to your main menu, you have three items you can put up navigation, your radio, and then your outside information. So weather information, if you have an XM satellite radio navigation subscription, you can be able to use that. Or by simply sliding over, now more to your traditional menu that you see in a lot of the other vehicles. Navigation, phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, those are all gonna be big parts too, you know, pretty common in vehicles nowadays. Couple things to be able to show that are kind of unique to these vehicles. One is gonna be quiet mode. I think this is cool. As a parent, I wish I had this in my vehicle. But let's say that you have some younger kids riding in the back or an infant and you still want to listen to the radio but you don't want to keep them up. By hitting quiet mode, what that's going to do, it's going to actually mute all the speakers inside the vehicle except for the two front ones. So even if you're listening to your music, it's not going to be drowning out and waking up anybody in the back. Or if it's just on a longer road trip, you want to be able to listen to something, you got a couple of your buddies in the back sleeping, still won't be able to disturb them. That's really, really cool. By simply coming in here, just hit quiet mode, turns on, couldn't be any easier. Really cool feature. From there, the other really nice feature they have is what they call passenger talk. So you're in a three row SUV, it's a pretty big size. If you're wanting to be able to shout back to Dakota, Tanner, Connor, whoever's in the back and be able to say anything to them instead of having to be able to turn your head and scream, you can simply be able to press this passenger talk button and once we do that, now, oh, that's not what we wanted. Hit the passenger talk button. Now it picks up all the sound that would be coming through the Bluetooth microphone that you would have in your car, like when you pair it up, and it's actually gonna amplify that. So now the speakers in the back are increasing the tone of my voice, or at least the volume of it, which is really cool. And of course it works and vice versa. So it just makes being able to communicate with people in the third row a lot easier, you know, to tell someone to stop playing with, you know, somebody else's iPad or whatever it may be. It seems kind of comical and gimmicky, but, you know, right now it almost sounds like you're a radio announcer because there's a little bit of an echo, but it works. And then once again, it's something really, really cool that they came up with to really simplify your life because this being a family SUV, if you got kids, they're in the back, you don't want to have to be constantly yelling at them. This is just one less thing 
to be able to relieve a little bit of stress that you might have. And then to turn it off, just simply hit the end button and that's it. Very, very cool. And it's like I said, those little features like that that you see that are uh, going to kind of build on the value of this vehicle. Now, one other thing I discovered that I really liked and didn't think too much about it, but wish I had when my daughter was younger, is going to be on the media interface. We have different sound tones we can be able to pick. I think there's six of them in total. So you have everything from a lively force, and this is just kind of a continuous loop. Think of it like a white noise. So if you're driving down the road, you have a couple kids in the back or an infant, they're a little bit fussy, you're going on a road trip, and they're about to go to sleep, think about putting on one of these, uh, these sounds for them. You have lively forest, the waves is really cool. I like the rainy day. Just as, like I said, you're sitting in kind of like a light rainstorm. Open air cafe, a lot of white noise there, and then the warm fireplace. These are all, once again, they've kind of really thought about the family orientation. You know, if you have a smaller child in the back, you want to have a little bit of that white noise. You can be able to have this playing on a constant loop, be able to help them go to sleep. Those are things that, like I said, I've really yet to be able to find a vehicle in this price point that would be able to have something like that. But wish it was technology or something they had in cars, you know, three, four years ago, which is really nice. Kind of moving our way down here, you can be able to see you have a large stack and display, especially for your air conditioning vents. So not only do you have one on both sides of the dash, but not two, but three of them for the center part for the driver and passenger. Really helps maximize airflow and be able to cool down the interior or heat it up during the winter time a lot more efficiently. And then of course, a little bit more air than pushing from the front to the rear. Now they do have a rear air conditioning, which is gonna be completely separate. We'll go over that when we hit the second row seats. With typical fashion with the Kia, I love these buttons nice solid push to them they got a good feel to them as well i just like that it's this nice aluminum aluminum or aluminum like design to where it just really fits in well with the trim but any one of your shortcuts for your map navigation uh, menu as well radio going to any of your different bands or anything like that everything this is going to be the quick way to be able to get to it and then the physical knobs i love the knobs so you have your volume knob your power and then of course to be able to scroll through any of your other different menus or just to be able to get through the radio band as well air conditioning pretty typical of your automatic so driver and passenger dual zone be able to control your fan speed or let the auto go does everything on its own and then getting down over here to the center console this is where like i said that nice truck feel comes from it's nice sturdy grab handles, which is something I really like. So if you are kind of doing a little bit of off-roading or going from the side or even just kind of like a get-me-up bar, be able to hold on to that. This being the top trim level, you do have the three-way heated seats, but also cooled seats too. And I like the positioning of where these are at. You don't have to go fumbling for them in a dash menu or something up here. They're their own independent switch away from everything. So very simple to be able to get to. Air conditioning seats in San Antonio, huge deal. Gotta love those. Heated seats. Yeah, there's a couple months where you actually be using them. We'll be coming to those here pretty shortly. But like I said, if you've gone on a long day, want to be able to have a little bit of heat, massage out some kinks in your back, you know, with the that, it's going to be able to help out, trust me. Getting into the center part, they did a good job utilizing space. So down here, you have two USB ports plus a 12 volt. And this model does have the wireless charging for your cell phone. So simply by placing your phone right there, be able to go ahead and charge it if it's compatible or you have a newer cell phone that's able to do that. Cup holders, pretty typical. Nice little storage spot in here for any loose change or anything else you want to be able to hold. Now this model does have the 3.8 liter V6 engine, which is going to be pretty standard for vehicles in this segment. You don't have something that's going to be a larger V8, a big gas guzzler, but it's more than enough to be able to get this vehicle up and going to freeway speeds, but also to maintain them too, while also helping out with fuel mileage. And that's connected with Kia's eight-speed automatic transmission. So typical automatic, park, reverse, neutral drive. And then you also do have a manual shift mode. Why is this important? Let's say that you're going through the Colorado Rockies. You want to be able to make sure you can maintain a gear so it's not hunting and selecting that way. You can be able to select it. But then also, let's say that you're coming down Pikes Peak and you're going down a steeper grade, you can be able to use the engine RPMs to be able to slow your vehicle down instead of riding your brakes as well. Nice little things to think of. Now you do have a couple different driver modes too, so you can be able to select the sensitivity of your steering, throttle response, transmission, everything from sport, comfort, economy, and then Kia has what they call their smart mode. So that's gonna just be able to determine your driving situation, how you're driving the vehicle, if you're accelerating rapidly, driving more normal, 
whatever it may be, and it can be able to adjust all those items on the fly. So it'll be able to give you the best fuel economy and then the sport response when you're using it that way. So you can be able to set it in smart and forget it and go from there. You do have an electronic parking brake and parking sensors. So front and rear, just along with a 360 degree camera, be able to turn those on and off. So if you're backing into a garage that you've done a hundred times before and you're tired of hearing the beep, you can turn that off from there. This vehicle is equipped with the auto stop. So if you come to a complete stop at a red light, the vehicle will momentarily turn off to help save with fuel mileage. You can be able to turn that feature off if you're not a fan, right there. And then auto hold. Auto hold is going to keep the vehicle, if you're on a grade, and the time it takes for me to be able to switch your foot from the brake to the gas, you don't want the vehicle rolling backwards, it's actually going to apply the brake and keep you there for a couple different, for a couple seconds and then be able to make sure that you can be able to not roll back into the vehicle behind you. So by having that feature, making life that much easier, you don't have to be able to panic if you're on a steep hill and rolling back, especially if it's quitting time traffic, you've been stuck at a light for three minutes, that's the last thing you want to think about. So having that auto hold, once again, big stress reliever. Typical center console, a little bit of storage inside there, cup holders for the rear, and that's actually going to be the next place we go take a look. So, why don't you follow me back there? All right. Space back here is good. Actually, it's really, really good. Tons of headroom, tons of legroom, and then tons of versatility too. So this being the higher trim level, we do have the captain's chair. So instead of having a complete bench seat here, this is gonna be seating for seven instead of for eight. Now there is the option to actually get the bench seat, which is nice. So if you are gonna be using this as a family hauler and you need the extra room, you can be able to get that. Some of the higher trim levels you see wanna go with the captain's chairs because it gives a little bit more of a luxurious feel to it. Now talk about accommodations, you know, We'll start over here with the driver or with the back driver door. Same materials, the same finishes that we saw in the front, follow through to the rear, which is really nice. Very, I mean, just the size of this. I mean, this is so nice. No matter what kind of seating configuration you're in, you got support on this side, which is, you know, great, especially on longer road trips or you're a bigger guy like myself. Big thing to be able to point out is on the higher trim level, even though they are manual, sunshades. This is important too, because if you're just too popular and you don't want to be seen by anybody going down the road, you can be able to put these up. But think about it, if you have a small child, somebody in a car seat or somebody who's a little bit more sensitive to light, you can be able to have these up to be able to kind of shield that from inside. So kind of getting back more to the family oriented part, if you have small children, this is a big thing to be able to have, especially on these sunny days in South Texas. Now let's talk about power back here. So everyone's got a cell phone, everyone's got a tablet, something to be able to run. Not only do you have your 12 volt down here to be able to charge, so if you want to have another USB port or anything else that you want to be able to plug in, you have that. But you actually have USB outlets on the side of both the front seats. So if you're running something like an iPad, iPhones, everybody who's sitting back here now has connectivity or be able to actually charge up their electronic devices, which is really cool. The only other vehicle, like I said, I've seen that on is going to be the Palisade. But just having those and thinking about that is a great idea instead of having them down here, they're going to be positioned right in front of the person that's going to be using it. Now, we talked about the dual climate zone that you have in the front. Well, you actually have that here for the rear too. So you can be able to select for the second and third row your temperature, fan speed, where the air is going to be going. So whether you want it up onto the top or the bottom or a mix between the two but also it is automatic as well. So just like with the front, it can be able to determine your fan speed, where it's going to make sure that it can be able to cool down the cabin properly. Another cool feature is kind of putting this up here towards the top of the ceiling and not down here. We got little kids, they can't be screwing with it and you can still be able to control all this from the front if you wanted to take over. And then once again, the larger panoramic roof, we got that closed now, but you can be able to see how it goes all the way from the second row into the third row. So everybody has a view. Once again, very well thought out, laid out. Now, let's talk about these seats too. These are the captain's chair, so you have support over here onto the door. You do have an armrest that comes down, which is adjustable, so no matter where you want or feel the most comfortable, you can be able to set it. These seats are reclinable, so they're adjustable, so you can actually be able to lean back, put your feet out, and really be able to relax. And this is no joke, I'm a bigger guy. I'm six foot three, around 270. This is with the seat all the way back so you can be able to see how much space you have back here. So for adults, I mean, it's like riding in, let's say something like an S-Class Mercedes, tons of room back here, which is really, really nice. Very, very comfortable. Now getting into the third row, 
that's a little bit of a different story. I don't want to have somebody my size sitting back there, at least three of us, you know, but it, it will work if you're going, you know, on a quicker trip. Let's say that you're shuttling people around for a graduation or a wedding. You can throw some adults back there. Going on a longer road trip, probably not too comfortable. But let's go ahead and get back there and be able to show you what that's all about. So the second row, as far as getting into the third row, pretty simple and easy to do. And one last thing I want to be able to touch on is just as far as the maneuverability. So let's say that you have somebody, a couple adults my size, sitting in the third row. These seats right here do slide forward and backwards. So you can actually be able to adjust to be able to give people a little bit more leg room in the third row. But let's talk about accessibility. Now on the top of the seat and also down here on the bottom, depending on if it's a child or adult, very easy to get into it just by simply hitting one of these buttons. Boom, that's it. So the seat will automatically tilt forward and then slide forward. That's a really cool feature to be able to have because if you have a booster seat or a child seat sitting in one of these, it's not one that has to fold down then roll forward to be able to get into it. So you can still leave items on top of the seat as well. Once you're done, this slides back, getting into whatever position that you like. Now, if you are calling something and you need a little bit more space, not only does a third row seat fold down flat, but by pulling this lever right here on the side, now you have a flat surface from the rear of the tailgate all the way up to the front seats. You're still gonna have a little bit of a gap in between here being the captain's chairs, but still having a flatter surface, so you have quite a bit of room to be able to haul anything that you don't want hanging out the back of the tailgate. Now you'll be able to fold that seat back up, simply lift that handle, and that's it. But this is a really cool feature because not only does it have two different spots for kids and adults, so no one's having to be able to fight for it, but then getting into it. You got these nice little grab handles right here on the side. So you have your three points of entry. One, two, and then your foot. Just that easy. Like I said, I'm a big guy. So three of me back here, doubtful. Three kids, very doable. And a lot of features kind of went into this too. Remember how we talked about the power outlets that you have in the front seats? You do also have these right here in the rear, which are gonna be extra USB ports. Then also cup holders, they have four total that are gonna be located in here as well. All right, so now that we've gone out of the third row seat, let's talk about the cargo area that you have in the back. And you know, first and foremost, we take a look at the rear design of this, you know, that same, you know, which we'll be covering here in a little bit, but that same still truck-like rugged feel, you know, something you don't see in a lot of crossover or, you know, mid-size SUVs. It kind of gotten away from that, that rugged look and kind of gone more towards the mainstream, you know, kind of curvy, you know, you still have that nice, off-roady SUV look, which is, once again, I'm something of a fan of. But if we come into the rear, you have two ways to be able to open it. One is gonna be by a switch located right down here or actually off your key fob. So remember, on the outside, key fob and from inside by the driver's seat. Still with the third row seat up, lots of storage back here, backpacks, soccer bags, luggage, whatever you would need. Now, on some of the other vehicles that we reviewed too, you do have a power third row seat. This is gonna be a manual one, so the advantage of that is they go down very quickly. Simply pull this and release. Just that simple. And getting them up is the same way too. Be able to go ahead and pull that handle and it comes up. Just like the second row seat, these are also reclinable. So you can be able to adjust the height in which the back will then come back or forward. Large amount of cargo space back here. So if you're not actually using the third row seat all the time, look at the amount of space you have. You almost triple it actually from what it would be if the seats were up. This is a split level cargo deck. So underneath you do have a pretty large amount of storage space down here. So first aid kits or something you just want to keep out of view, a uh, roadside assistant kit, whatever you'd want. Tons of space back there as well. Now let's talk about the tailgate. Yes, it is a power tailgate. One of the other cool features about it is you can actually adjust the speed in which it opens or closes as well, which is nice. If you want it on normal, great. You can actually be able to speed it up or slow it down. So if you have kids and they're running around, you want a little bit more time for it to be able to close for people to get out of the way, you can be able to adjust that. One of the other big parts is if you own this vehicle, there's a good chance it's gonna be going into a garage. And let's say you have a little bit of a smaller one, you can actually be able to adjust the height in which the tailgate opens to. So being power open, you know, this is gonna be in its upright most position actually just lower down the tailgate to where you would like for it to be able to stop. It's going to stay there. Press and hold this button. You hear it beep twice. Now every time when the tailgate opens up, it's actually going to stop at that one point. So you have to worry about it going up and hitting your garage door opener or any shelving that you may have on top of that. That's really ingenious, you know, something that a lot of people won't think about until the first time that they would need it. And then to be able to go ahead and close it, simply hit the button and then boom, that's it. Very cool. I said, really like that tailgate feature. 
And if we take a look at the exterior of it, no, there's no mistake and you're not gonna bump in or go to a different vehicle thinking it was yours at the parking lot. Being the higher trim level, you do have the blacked out 20 inch wheels. These do have the Pirelli Scorpion tires on it. So not so much as a off-road or all-terrain tire, more of a street tire to be able to help complement the smooth ride that you're gonna get with the vehicle. But then also, you know, to have a little bit of a sporty feel with it too. So it's not gonna compromise your ride quality, but be able to give you more control. Like I said, accenting with those 20 inch black wheels really sets it out, especially with this color, which I absolutely dig. And it's working really, really well with this matted finish that you see that starts from the rear bumper over the wheel arches down along the bottom and into the front. Love this glossy black in between your uh, pillars. And then this, like I said, almost like a brushed aluminum look underneath instead of just the traditional chrome. Just once again, another accent that really kind of sets it off and really adds another bit of wow factor to it. Then when we get up to the front, was there to say a couple of headlights, a front grille, but the styling design of it's very, very nice. Yes, you have your Kia logo. Yes, you have your front view camera down here. But other than that, your similarities with a lot of the other SUVs stop out there. This still has that nice rugged look of an actual SUV instead of that curvy look that you see on a lot of other ones that are in the segment. But one thing I really like is the Telluride spelled out right on top of the grill. Something that you see on like a lot of the heavy duty pickup trucks and stuff nowadays. So yes, you are driving a Kia, but having those Telluride spelled up on the top really looks good. And then this just may be me, but your fog lamps down here that you can see that they're actually in LED lights. And those look more like off-road lights instead of just a little circle projector beam light that you see on a lot of the other SUVs out there. Really enhances the look. And I love these front headlamps too. So instead of having the nice curvy ones that are teardrop, nice boxy these are projector beams and they are leds and then you have this nice running light that actually encompasses the headlamp so when you lock it you can be able to see it, it just adds that nice little touch to it something you don't see on a lot of suvs these days really makes it a handsome vehicle all right guys well i think that we've kind of gone over a lot of the great features of this vehicle you know in depth some of this not more of a traditional car review but more of the actual things that are going to make this vehicle stand out and I hope you learned something new because obviously we learned a lot about the Kia brand today as well. Remember, if you like the video, hit that subscribe button along with the bell so you get notifications every time that we release one. We're doing one about one a week now. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. We read every one of them. And my name is John Sievers, and this is another episode of Roadside Reviews. Look forward to seeing you the next time, guys.